Intentionally or inadvertently, Trump in the last 72 hours may have tipped as many as three separate times just how he would try to stay in power in this country in the event of a Biden victory two weeks from tomorrow. It involves a manufactured fake scandal and crazy as it sounds aloud, a willful attempt to overthrow the duly elected government of the United States of America. Trump has also doubled down on his stochastic terrorist threats against the governor of Michigan, while his re-election campaign has now accused that governor of encouraging people to assassinate the president. The Trump coup first. Trump tweeted that, quote, it is now a proven fact and cannot be denied that all of that info is the real deal that makes it impossible for Biden to ever assume the office of president. If that had been all of it, that might have been dismissed as the mere enraged grunt of a cornered animal nearing the end. But on Friday in Michigan, Trump had lied that Joe Biden is, quote, a criminal. He's committed crimes. Two hours later in Florida, Trump led chants of lock up the Bidens. Today, he inexplicably let reporters listen in on a conference call with his own staff, during which he said, quote, I think Joe Biden has a scandal coming up that's going to make him almost an impotent candidate. We found stuff yesterday. We gave it to the press. Separately, Trump has said the Wall Street Journal was working on a piece. This afternoon in Arizona, meantime, he said Biden is lucky that Bill Barr is the attorney general, quote, because I know people that would have locked him up five weeks ago. And when a reporter asked him about this strategy of calling Biden a criminal, he answered, you are a criminal for not reporting it. It doesn't have to work to be a plot to overthrow the government. It doesn't have to be sane to be a plot to overthrow the government. But it is essential to recognize that that one claim, it is impossible for Biden to ever assume the office of the president, is a direct threat against the peaceful transfer of power and thus a direct threat of violent insurrection against the government. And under our laws, the man who makes that threat, Donald Trump, is liable to later be treated accordingly to be prosecuted as a man attempting to overthrow the government of the United States of America by violence. The words impossible for Biden to ever assume the office of president implies a Biden victory. And then a defeated Trump somehow, based on whatever bullshit he's peddled to the Wall Street Journal, just like the bullshit the New York Post printed over the objections of even its own editors and reporters, declares that for the good of the country, or whatever, he cannot permit Biden to take office. This plan, crazy or not, echoes Trump's 2016 bleating about how Hillary Clinton should not be, quote, allowed to run for president and should not be allowed to take office. These are pure Nazi and Stalinist tactics, as are those from the weekend in which Trump might as well have threatened to personally kill Governor Whitmer of Michigan. First, the Nazis would target a victim for harassment, violence, death. Then they would encourage their deranged hate groups to plot her capture and murder. Then, when their well-developed terror attack was prevented, they would deny all cause and effect. And then, after a pause, have Trump publicly resume his terrorist threats against the governor. And when she draws the undeniable straight line between Trump's words and her own brush with death, Trump's political prostitutes then fabricate a reason to claim she is encouraging a plot against him. This is exactly what Hitler's people did in Germany in the 1930s. It is the exact verbal parallel to the Reichstag fire. It is the intentional destabilization of the baseline safeties of American life. And it underscores anew that the American media, in the shallow, misguided belief that neutrality equals objectivity, and that a bunch of literal facts is the same as the truth, is biased towards Donald Trump because it will not acknowledge these simple words. Donald Trump is a terrorist. As evidenced by this weekend's orgy of madness in campaign stops in Minnesota and Wisconsin and Michigan and Florida and California, it is inescapable, and yet it is not being stated with the blunt truth that this moment of existential threat requires. Donald Trump is now employing on a daily basis and sometimes on an hourly basis stochastic terrorism, terrorism by proxy, inspirational terrorism. Donald Trump is not merely screaming fire in a crowded theater. Donald Trump has now descended into doing nothing but screaming fire in a crowded theater. Trump is using terrorism. Trump is inspiring terrorism. Trump is fomenting terrorism. Trump is demanding terrorism. Trump's campaign is terrorism. Just 
Say it. Trump is a terrorist. I never thought just 15 years after my time at the Department of Homeland Security, a man wrote over the weekend, that domestic terror threats would surpass global threats. Those dangerous domestic embers are stoked each time Trump encourages violence against U.S. leaders as he did again with his vitriol aimed at Governor Whitmer. That was from Tom Ridge, not just the former Secretary of Homeland Security, but the first of them, appointed in the weeks after 9-11 and part of a Bush-era system that, as he later acknowledged, manipulated foreign terror threats for domestic Republican political gain. GOP Congressman Francis Rooney of the Florida 19th was today asked if he agreed with Governor Whitmer that Trump was inciting extremist violence and the Republican gave a simple answer. Yes, I do. Even Tom Ridge and a Florida Republican congressman now see Trump for what he is, the greatest single terrorist threat to this country. Just say it. Saturday in Michigan, Trump berated Governor Whitmer. Someone in the crowd, could have been a supporter, could have been a staffer, began to chant, lock her up. He laughed, then bleated, lock them all up. This is days after the training video emerged of some of the 14 Trump supporters arrested by the FBI, scuttling out of an SUV, pointing their automatic weapons at an imaginary target, practicing for the kidnap and execution plot against Whitmer. When Whitmer then underscores what's happening here, when she says on national TV that, quote, the president is at it again and inspiring and incentivizing this kind of domestic terrorism, the Trump campaign responds by pulling the Reichstag fire switch on her. They tweeted, as did the Weasley Little Republican Speaker of the Michigan House, that Whitmer, quote, displayed an 8645 sign during her TV appearance. 86 can be shorthand for killing someone. Whitmer is encouraging assassination attempts against President Trump just weeks after someone sent a ricin-laced package to the White House. We cannot know the campaign's excuse for the lie. 86 has never been shorthand for killing someone. That is deep six, and even deep six is rarely used that way. 86 means remove or leave. It is from a New York City speakeasy during Prohibition, where as cops arrived at the front door, drinkers were encouraged to 86 to leave by the back door, number 86 Bedford Street. But the excuse for the tweet is obviously one of two things to make the actual target of Trump's terrorism, actual as in Trump tweeted liberate Michigan and his supporters were then arrested for trying to kidnap and murder the governor of Michigan, to make the actual target of Trump's terrorism look paranoid or more likely to make it look like she is somehow connected to a Canadian woman's attempt to send ricin to the White House. And overarching even that Trump scumbaggery, that steal from the Nazi playbook is the fact that Trump's own campaign is using that one phrase, quote, encouraging assassination attempts against President Trump. In a country where four presidents have been assassinated with guns and 13 more functional attempts have been thwarted, it is beyond belief that anyone could deliberately bring up the term assassination during this time of American mass madness, unless... They are doing it to produce a monumentally profound accusation about the next would-be president-elect and use that somehow as an excuse to somehow try to bar him from office. It is just like Trump's idiot daughter-in-law, Lara, said on television about the rallies at which Trump threatened Whitmer, quote, It's a fun, light atmosphere. Idiot. Trump's Michigan terror proxies also were forming plans to kidnap and murder Governor Northam of Virginia. On Friday in Florida, Trump accused Representative Omar of Minnesota of being an illegal immigrant who had married her own brother to gain entry to this country. Friday night, a retired firefighter, once honored by the city of Wichita, Kansas, was arrested for threatening by text to kidnap and, quote, cut the throat of Mayor Whipple of that city because of Wichita's mask ordinance. On Saturday in Minnesota, Trump said there was, quote, something beautiful, unquote, about watching the National Guard use gas on protesters against the murder of George Floyd. He is a terrorist. There are no protections for this country from an elected leader who encourages his followers to terrorize and kidnap and murder. We are as vulnerable as the Philippines under Duterte, Russia under Stalin, Germany under Hitler. There are no protections for this country from an elected leader who happens simultaneously to be insane or mentally impaired 
or whichever clinical term best explains the fact that there is no real human being inside that body, just some form of living organism that barely perceives the difference between reality and the perversions of his own mind. There are nightmare scenarios in which there are also no protections for this country from a lame duck president announcing that it is now a proven fact and cannot be denied and thus impossible for a president-elect to ever assume the office of the president. But the first step towards defending ourselves and of ridding ourselves of this creature, of, to borrow a phrase, to 8645, is to say and to insist that our leaders and our reporters also say the truth, the reality, the obvious. Donald Trump is a terrorist and he must be stopped. It's worse by the hour. Let me give you the quick rundown of the day's headlines, and they are many, and some of them will not be included here. Trump has trashed Tony Fauci again. People are tired of hearing Fauci and all these idiots, all these idiots who got it wrong. The idiot in chief is saying this, while infections are now up 30% in this country over two weeks ago. This is truly the Soviet leadership during Chernobyl. Lie, 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 blame others. In response to this, however, a glimmer of light. GOP Senator Lamar Alexander of Tennessee then said, if more Americans paid attention to Fauci's advice, we'd have fewer cases of COVID-19 and it would be safer to go back to school and back to work and out to eat. Alexander is the sixth GOP senator to in some way criticize Trump this past week, which tells you exactly what the political chances are in the election in two weeks and one day's time. And most importantly, Alexander is right. And connected to this afternoon's news at the Arizona rally, Trump said, they're getting tired of the pandemic, aren't we? They're we. You turn on CNN, that's all they cover. CNN, you dumb bastards. Once again, something stated by the dumb bastard in chief. Trump has now moved on to, with the help of his aides, pre-trashing the second debate, which was supposed to be the third debate, a weekend's worth of first trashing the moderator, Kristen Welker of NBC, and now Jason Miller, the Trump aide, who also known as the Stay Puffed Marshmallow Man, is refusing the commission's decision to have mic cutoff capability. Uh, bluntly, of course, Trump should not be given a mic at all. We just have him stand there while Biden explains things to him until his head recreates the scene from the movie Scanners. And an additional level of debate news, there has been a letter sent by the new, the one who's not yet in jail, Trump campaign manager Bill Stepien to the commission in charge of the debates, asking today to have all of the topics ranging from COVID-19 to various domestic tax issues, all of the topics previously agreed to for the upcoming debate should be changed to foreign policy, or I guess they won't participate. From Donald Trump Jr., we have this breaking news. Daddy's next move is to break up the FBI. I wonder why Mr. Trump Jr. is worried about the FBI. And I'll leave you with this. There was a Fox News graphic evidently today that showed two gigantic screen-sized pictures of, on the left, Judge Amy Coney Barrett, and on the right, Bill Maher. I don't even want to know what the conversation was about that invoked the two of them, but if Mitt Romney can equate Trump to me, I see no reason why Fox can't equate Amy Coney Barrett to my college classmate Bill Maher, with whom I almost had a fistfight in 1978. Good night and good luck.